Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at something different. It's not so much about creating a landscape. I've already prepared my, my scene and rendered it looks like this. Okay, um, you know, just some water, foreground, middle ground, background, um, sky. And it it's fine and you could render it out and then um, you could post process this either in the composite and blender which I'm not very good at or you do Photoshop or any other software you have however um, if you do that you need to do a lot of selections and maskings and things like that um, which is a pain when you have those fine details here in the trees at least for me so today I want to show you a great free add-on I have found by um, Sebastian Fischer, a German-based uh, 3D artist who does amazing work. And I will link his um, Gumroad um, page in the description where you can, if you like that approach and this workflow, um, you can download as well. It is for free. Show this man some love and maybe buy him a coffee. That would be great. So what we are actually going to do is this. Um, I'm usually very careless when it comes to creating my, my objects. And as you can see, we've got the foreground, we've got these terrains separate, this one and this one. They're either height maps or nodescape based terrains. And then some custom assets scattered on them. Uh, Bergpack and true terrain materials were used to texture um, this scene. So what we need to do now before we do anything else is to put all our individual assets we want to be rendered as an individual picture into a collection. So click, let's start with this one. A new collection and call it foreground you can call it what you want but that's what I'm doing click M new collection mid ground one M mid ground two M background one M background two so that's that so we've got these then we have the water which we will put into a separate category as well which is called water again you can call it what you want the particle systems um, of the assets I leave as is and then I've got I'm using an HDRI projected within a transparent dome so I'm going to put this one into a new collection as well so let's just do a collection called sky and this is where I'm putting my dome and the Sun I put into the base collection which I'm going to call Chem and Sun. So I've got the camera and the sun in here, the particle systems I leave as is and then I have everything else in collections. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven render layers and it's gotten better in Blender 3.0, but with this add-on, it is actually pretty easy or even easier. So we're heading over to Compositor and we have now here a render layer manager. And talking to you made me forget how many layers I need. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I will do eight because the eight one will be everything together. So let's go back here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
just click on the plus and create your layers. Now, the great thing with that is now, and that will be my full layer, you can click on auto rename and it calls it ABC to H and we can also assign random colors to it. Now we're going to click on use nodes for each of these layers and then create nodes. And voila, our render layers are set in the compositor. Isn't that great? So you can, it will create wherever you put your output settings, it will create um, these folders where all your images passes are going to be saved. Um, be careful though with the version because if you um, have already done something like that and you take the same version it will overwrite it. So I'll put oh no let's put 10 in here. Update the output path and we should see we should see in here that it these things are going to be put in v10 as a folder name beauty um, you can change that and the preferences will be our um, albedo or diffuse map uh, everything else would be called alpha or mist or z or whatever pass you want to render and here you can put um, your um, which file format you want and um, color, color depth, compression, um, XKR for the data pace passes. We have not selected any, so I just want the images. So I want um, a transparent background. Why? Because let's just open this up. With this specific scene having um, the HDRI projected on a dome. Um, I, so if I'm just, for example, making this invisible, it would be transparent if we have set it. So the only thing we need to do now is, as you can see here, we've got all our layers in here and A should be the first and what we need to do now is activate the hold out option which you can get by clicking on this filter symbol click the hold out and you have these bubbles um, for each of these collections and what's happening now is let's say a is only foreground. So what I'm doing is I leave camera and sun alone, I leave the particle systems alone, and then I'm going to say I want the foreground but I want everything else not to be shown. And take a look, it actually just puts these my foreground into the render which is exactly what I want. Now I'm going heading over to B and it should be the same thing. So it should show me everything, but I'm not going to, that takes too much time. So foreground we have, so let's hold that out. I want middle ground, everything else will be hold out. C. I want foreground, mid-ground and the second mid-ground. Let's double check because it should only give us this part of the scene. Everything else is transparent and it is. Let's head over here. So we're going heading over to D. Hold out, hold out, hold out, background one. E. And 
H should be our whole scene and I think it's a little bit I have that set to 80% let's go with 60 and I'm not going to bore you with um, the whole rendering process but I want to show you what it does so maybe this works in a, in a bearable time so remember, and you can see it here, scene A, we should only get a render of our foreground, however, with the um, assets applied to it, because we did not hold out the, um, our scattered assets and trees, and there they are. We see some shadows of that. I need to fix that, but that's not actually a problem because if I got this layer in Photoshop or any software you might use for post-processing and compositing, um, it would be um, you would get an overlay of that anyhow. But the great thing is that all these small details of these twigs and leaves and branches are actually transparent. So um, when I get my water in here, it actually fits my layer perfectly and I don't need to try to blend it or select it properly. So that's that. Um, it's really easy as you uh, have seen. Um, I love this add-on. Um, it's for free. I mean, you can do this, of course, all by yourself. Uh, it's probably not that difficult, but why make something harder for yourself when you have um, a free add-on that can help you with that. So, as you can see, A has been rendered. Now it's B. What should B be? What should B be is um, the first middle ground with the assets on it. And... That's it. I will leave you now and will show you the individual renders um, when I get them and how they can be put into Photoshop or uh, um, other software for compositing. Um, hope this is something you can use um, and like and see you next time. So I'm back again and as promised um, I have loaded all my rendered pictures into Photoshop and these are the individual results. First layer, middle one, middle two, background one, background two, the water, the sky, and the background, so the, the underlying um, overall setting so we don't have any fringes in here which you can do with other Photoshop wizardry I'm not really familiar with but the great thing is now you can actually address each individual aspect of your composition so um, you don't have to mask the sky out you already have it in here so let's just you know stand it curves thingy you can just play with your sky change the mood of the picture uh, put some oh, okay this is now a completely different universe just wanted to show you how your layers will be set up then and you can individually post-process them. Thanks. Bye again.